Sponsorship for the Cradle Catholic is provided by El Padrecito Productions. Catholic evangelization with an urban flair. El Padrecito Ministries is a nonprofit Catholic organization dedicated to spreading the gospel through the intercession of our Blessed Mother to children, youth, and young adults through the arts, entertainment, media, and education. For more information, visit www.elpadrecito.org. Sponsorship also provided by S Mind Productions. If you're looking for quality music production for your film, your music, your podcast, or whatever the case is, contact my boy Separate Mind at PeteRoseBeats at gmail.com. Time to take you sinners to church now. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, from Music in Focus Studio, where we discuss music, faith, community, and tacos. This is the Cradle Catholic Podcast with your host, C26. Stay tuned, stay tuned, we can learn something. When we barbecue, the only time we burn something. My people with me and we never on our own. When we have a guest on, yeah, it's like we at home. Uh, we talk with bros and with sisters and we all tight. If it's about tacos, then we talking all night. And if I'm honest, I'ma order me some fries. Let's talk about hip hop, talk about life, yeah. It's real recognized, real, no, I'm talking about It's your boy C26, and you are tuned in to the Cradle Catholic. My guest today, there's a lot to say about her. I don't know if we can fit it into one podcast. We might not, we might have to have her back. I'm going to give you a little, just a little quick breakdown of some of the things she's done, some of the things she does. Uh, she's an actress. She's a stunt double. She's a, a stunt choreographer. She's a motion capture performer. And she's a public speaker. And most importantly, I think she's a woman of faith. In 2019, she was uh, nominated by the Screen Actors Guild Awards for Outstanding Action Performance by a Stunt Ensemble in a Motion Picture. And we're just going to introduce her uh, with no further ado. Is that the right word? <laughs> <laughs> we got Brenda Lorena Garcia. Brenda, Hello. What's How's it going? I'm doing you fantastic. Too. How are you? Thank you so much. Great introduction. I appreciate that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey. Thanks. So... I, I mentioned that Screen Actors Guild Award. I thought that was pretty interesting. I was looking at your IMDb. IMDb? Is that what it yeah, is? IMDb yeah. page, right? Yeah. And I saw that. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I, I was like, that's pretty awesome. What role was that for? That was for Ant Man and the Wasp. So I was Ant Man's daughter's uh, stunt double in the movie. Nice, nice. Yeah. I'm going to brag about you for a minute, if you don't mind, right? Just a little bit of your, your resume, right? Because You've probably seen Brenda in probably dozens of movies and TV series and commercials and stuff. And just to give you a few of kind of the, the more well-known, you know, uh, features she's been in, she's got stuff like Suicide Squad, like Avatar 2, Bird Box, Transformers, uh, The Last Night, right? Uh, Baywatch, Hawaii Five-0, Safe Haven. Some of the TV shows we're talking about, like Jane the Virgin, American Horror Story, Mayans MC, Lethal Weapon, This Is Us. And I think most recently, if I'm not mistaken, Penny Penny Dreadful. Yeah. That's most yeah. recently. Yeah, that one is what? Yeah. A Showtime uh, yeah. feature, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about like working in some of these roles? And Whoa, it's like so diverse. It's so fun and so cool. Um, I, I love what I do because every day it's like a surprise. You know, I never know what's the next thing. It's always thrilling and exciting. Um, all the different roles and characters I get to play, um, yeah. you know, it's just so exciting. And then the action is so thrilling to me, you know, cause I'm always being asked like, Are, aren't you afraid of doing something like that? It's like, never, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, there, in some, some stance, instances, there's like, all right, there's a natural level of fear that you should have. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, it's just, I look forward to it and it's exciting. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's just really fun, I think, to just be able to play all these different roles. You know, even as like a creature, like sometimes you get to play like a creature role or like a like a zombie or something. It's just so fun. I just feel like because I'm small, I get these interesting roles that 
So. You know, sometimes people think I'm playing the role of a creature or a zombie, and I'm actually not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just being myself, man. <laughs> you know, I just look funny. It's just, I'm just being myself. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I saw that you did a role for The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, a video game. So, what, yeah. what does that mean to be doing a stunt role for a video game? How does What's that's that all about? Cool. Well, basically, that's like some of the motion capture stuff. Um, but with Avatar, I also did motion capture. It's basically when they put you in this animated ability, right? So that you're being seen as not yourself, but some character. That's what okay. the motion capture is for. And yeah. so it captures your motion, and then they put the cartoon or whatever it is over you in post. Um, so basically, um, yeah, for that, it was like the Walking Dead video game. I got to play this girl named Mariana. And uh, it's just, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff I'm chosen for, there's some sort of stunt or and or sport aspect. So there's also, there's always some sort of physical component because of my background. So, and I think that's just makes it more exciting, you know, because I'm still blessed to have the acting roles, but they, they I always uh, get a, the preference for action because that's always been like a dream of mine, so. Nice. So basically what you're saying is that, so for example, like with Avatar, too right or with this video game for example when you're seeing that particular character you're the one that's doing all the motion yes you're basically imposing that animation yes on you. yeah so that's they put that in afterwards you know but they capture us first and then the computer fills in the, the rest and that's the technical stuff that they can get yes. into detail but yeah that's crazy that's crazy it's super that, cool yeah yeah and then some commercials, right? I think I need to do some commercials and stuff like that too, right? Was there any yes. any big ones? Any yes, any okay. Ones that were so. very memorable, I guess you'd say. <laughs> I think there's a few pretty memorable ones, but my favorite memorable ones are ones that a lot of people saw and it kind of blew up a little. I mean, I think most of the USA watches the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I was. Um, I was in a Mountain Dew Super Bowl commercial. Oh, nice. There's a whole story behind that. But anyway, um, when I got cast, I had no idea it was for a Super Bowl commercial. And they just had like contracts coming for me left and right. And I was like, what is all this paperwork I'm signing? They're like, more money. I was like, all right, I'll sign oh, yeah. it. And yeah. then so, uh, so I signed all these papers and I had no idea it was a Super Bowl commercial, right? And so I'm just having fun because like it's so just, you know, it's so discreet. You have to be very secretive and uh, quiet. There's a lot of confidentiality. So they really try not to say so much because the people get excited. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was a commercial. Like, okay, I didn't know it was that huge of a commercial. And so I'm just having fun. Basically, I'm the twerking dog in that commercial. <laughs> you guys saw the Mountain Dew Kickstart commercial. I'm the little dog, like, just twerking and just, like, yeah. oh, had a great time. Do you remember what teams we were playing that year? I know it wasn't the Cowboys because we haven't been there in years. I don't know how long it's been, but uh, it's been I was 20. I can't remember if it was 2015 or 16. I think it was 2016, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. probably, like... Yeah. A few, you know, decades after the Cowboys have been, you know what I mean? So, yeah. unfortunately, we, we haven't been there recently, so. Yeah, That's and crazy. another big commercial that I would see all the time when TV was popular for me was um, for the uh, American uh, Family Insurance. I was basically the little astronaut girl, so I stunt doubled for her. And nice. I could do all this cool stuff, and I felt like I was in outer space. And we even went to this location that looked like Mars, and it felt like Mars. I mean, I don't know what Mars feels like, but I mean, it did not feel like planet Earth. That place was, the weather was so vicious. There was rocks flying everywhere. I literally felt like I was on another planet. It was so fun. Thank you, God. It's so fun. <laughs> I saw, I was looking through some of your YouTube videos, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw that there was a video where you were on fire for a stunt. Yeah. So, that had to be stressful, <laughs> I, I guess, right, to say the least, right? Well, well tell me about that. That's funny, because like, you, as a dad, that's probably the first thing that comes up. But like, and for my parents, they don't know anything that I do until after I survive my stunts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, survival's key, I don't, right? I do not tell them what I'm doing until way yeah. after. My mom has no any, idea. Any more roles if you didn't survive, right? So you gotta make sure you survive. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, for me, it's like I was so excited. I can't wait. Actually, every day I feel like I think about my next hopeful opportunity so I could do something on fire because I love that. Yeah. Like, yeah, just like you can feel the heat 
you know, they put a lot of cooling gels and protective clothing, unless there's naked burns, which means it goes straight on your skin, which I've had a small part of like my arm and stuff. Wow. Um, but like, it's really exciting. Um, however, like you have to be very careful because fire is fire and it's obviously way more powerful than us. So in that sense, yeah, there is some stress and that's that natural fear I was talking yeah. to that I would go back to is because you don't want to be super careless. You want to be careful because you don't want to have that daredevil mentality like I'm just going to do anything and risk setting yourself on fire for reals. You want to be careful. You want to be a trained professional. And that's what makes it fun is it's that thrill of knowing you practice and then that that slight fear of the excitement of not really knowing what's going to happen and have fun with it, you know. So. I think the key word you said there was trained professional, right? Because it's not like you're just arrogant and just going out there and taking all kinds of like uncalculated risk right you you're going out there and you're confident with what you're doing but you're confident because you've taken the time to train yourself or to be properly prepared or what type of safety you know precautions are in place for for stunt actors and actresses i mean on set i mean i think basically a, a bunch i mean to every extent possible we have emts or uh, other medical professionals usually on set like firefighters um especially if they're bigger stunts involved but there's always a medic on set period there's always and then our stunt coordinator and assistant directors are trained in safety as well i myself am cpr trained and first aid trained and certified all this is very important so we always have a very Safety is number one for stunts. A yeah. lot of people think like it's a misconception. Oh, the stunts, the action and the coolness factor is number one. It's like, no, no, no. Our safety is priority number one above everything. If a stunt performer ever feels a slight bit of doubt or any anything, some sort of anxiety, just don't, they, our coordinators highly encourage us, just don't even go for it. It's yeah. That's how much we value our safety. There's been too many injuries and too many deaths for us to risk who, who kind of stands in the gap for you? When, like, are you, are you guys unionized or how does that work as far as like uh, somebody standing in the gap for you when you don't like, want to take on a role? If you think something's oh, yeah. going to be our, challenging, our, too challenging or too dangerous. Right. So usually when we sign up for the job is because we're trained and we're prepared and we, we're comfortable with doing something like that. But there's times where something comes up and there's different factors that might be in the way that makes the, the stump maybe a little more dangerous or maybe something inside, like your gut instinct says, you know what, maybe I shouldn't do that today. You, you, wanna, you wanna follow that because even if you've done a high dive before a million mm -hmm. times and something inside is telling you just not to go for it, then the coordinator won't want you to do it if you don't feel like you should. So basically that our stunt coordinator, which is something I'm training in as well, is uh, our representative for safety that's looking out for our best interest period above the money being made in the movie, etc. Is a stunt coordinator the same thing as a stunt choreographer? Yeah, basically. Okay, okay. Yeah, like a fight choreographer is like another thing that like I think you were trying to mention was someone who choreographs uh, fight scenes and it's right. kind of like, you know, you put together a sequence. Uh, stunt coordinator is basically the person in charge of the stunt team. Um, oh, okay. Overseer. So, yeah. yeah, they're our representative in that sense, our safety lookout, uh, our boss, and also the AD's department but most directly Sun Corner. However, we also have our union, which is called SAG-AFTRA, mm -hmm. which is short for the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. By the grace of God, I've been a union member for yeah. 10, years, 10 years now. Thank yeah. God for acronyms, because that's a long one right there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> there used to be two right. separate unions that I joined separately at different times. Uh, yeah. But now they've merged in 2012. I think they merged or 2013. Has there ever been something that you thought was too dangerous or you just didn't accept because it was too too challenging or? No, no, no there's been instances. You regretted taking because you're like, wow, this is, this is tough. You know, there's been instances where, you know, I actually had those thoughts and I'm like, you know, maybe I shouldn't, you know, and that's its own story on its own. But at the end of the day, I've done, by the grace of God, safely every stunt that I've been asked to do. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. You and I were having a conversation recently about a stunt where you had to kind of go take a fall down some stairs, I think it was. Oh, thank you. With, with I think a, it just aired this Sunday. Uh, <laughs> Did it air the Sunday? I think so. I haven't got to see it yet. I need to reach out to my friend. It might be this past Sunday that just aired, or it's airing this Sunday. And you were with another person 
in the fall, right? So it wasn't yes. like you were just falling by yourself. Yes. So you weren't having to just coordinate your own, like your own fall. No, there was a six foot together. man. Yes. I'm sorry? A six foot man. Wow. Who also a stunt double who had a fall with me. First of all, we're not just falling. We're, he's hauling me. He's chasing wow. me up these stairs. We're running as fast as we can. And he just grabs me at the top of the stairs by the leg and we flip backwards down one set. And then he starts to like, you know, you'll see it. You'll have to see it because I don't know if it aired this past Sunday. But then we go down another set of stairs. So it's two sets of stairs. Wow. Yeah. I know you were maybe a little anxious about that one, right? Or, or not? I think that it's a little bit more intricate because there's another person involved. The risk of getting hurt obviously increased when there's more people or machines involved. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to like when I'm free to do it myself, I trust myself because I trust in God, you know? So I'm very confident in my own ability. But whenever there's another person involved, there's always that extra thing, you know? So it's like, you know, always be on the lookout for them and we look out for each other. So I think yeah. it's, I think it was a precaution on both of our parts that we want to, we want to look out for each other because we care about each other, we respect each other and we're not careless. We love what we do and we're trained professionals. That's that word again, trained professionals. You know? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think with as much talent as you have and as much talent as a lot of these other people have, actors and actresses and stunt doubles and whatever, right? Musicians, the talent's one thing, but if the work ethic is not there, then you're not getting too far. So I imagine, well, I don't imagine, I know that your your work ethic is like crazy off the scale. Like, tell me a little bit about it. what is it like a, a normal routine? I mean, how many hours are you putting into preparation or filming or you know anything that you're doing? Because I imagine it's, it's not an easy thing. And it's Thank probably you. definitely a, a grueling schedule for you sometimes. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I love that. And I thank you for your kind words with the work ethic. Um, you know, I feel very privileged and honored that, you know, the phone calls have been coming in by the grace of God because I've been recommended by other people over and over and over again. And yeah. I've been blessed with amazing people that just look out for me and they just see potential and whatever else that is, but what that I can't fill in for them. But basically what I do on my part is I've been practicing discipline. I've been training myself in creating good habits and not just in the physical life and my worldly life, but in the spiritual life, I think you know a little bit about that as well. Yeah. Physically speaking, like for my work, before this quarantine, I was doing CrossFit, physical fitness, and then also just training at the normal gym. It's like 20 hour, 24 hour fitness. Um, every day, about five to six days a week, on the days where I'm like in the valley in LA, which was very often and frequent when yeah, yeah. for this quarantine, I was going to mix martial arts about four days a week, sometimes more than once a day. I love mixed martial arts. My favorite is Muay Thai, the style of fighting. So I love using the elbows and the knees. I just love <laughs> nice. that. I don't know why, I just do. So you can beat me up, like almost for sure. No, no, you can beat me up, like for sure, for sure. Well, here's the thing. I fight so that I don't have to. You okay, know? okay, cool. It's a cool way to like release stress and for like whatever, you know, just like get some energy out. As a young person, I have a lot of energy and sometimes um, the weight of the world can just kind of compound you and the way to release it, it's like, I love mixed martial arts and I also love, I love the contemplative part of prayer and martial That's why I love martial arts because there's a contemplative component to it. So is there like a cool people gym where you go to? Or is it like, you go to like the regular everyday gym that everybody else goes to? Or is there a spot where like, where you A-listers go to, you know, like the, you know, the, the cool people, right? <laughs> so both, yeah. I go to normal gym. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called In Shape. I like that gym. It's close to home. Um, it's like, like I said, it's like 24 hour fitness, but it's a different name. And yeah. then I go to my, the, the dojo, the mixed martial arts gym before mm -hmm. the quarantine. Um, I love that place. It's like family. They just get so much out of me. And I love that. Like the, yeah, they, they push you to do your best. They push oh you to, goodness. to be great at what you do. They're not me at all. And yeah. I love that. I feed off that. You said prior to the quarantine, you were doing these workouts. So how, how are you staying in shape right now? Are you just working out at the house or? Yeah, what, what are I have you doing? workout DVDs behind me. Um, okay. I basically jam to those every day. Um, I hope you jam some foundation while you're. Yes, so definitely. Six, right? Why, yeah. Oh, come okay, on. Okay, cool. Come cool. on. Okay. Yeah. And all our Catholic brothers, I'd be listening to all of them. But I also, yeah. the good thing about being home was like, I started taking 
dance classes here at home too. Like nice. uh, Brazilian, it's like samba type class. Nice. So I like that. What about like <laughs> as 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 dieting and stuff like this? Do you have to keep a, a strict diet or any type of like a, a diet plan or anything like that? Doctor? <laughs> I'm being more careful about what I eat. Okay. The good thing is it's not a difficult uh, discipline for me. That's okay. a blessing by the grace of God. But yeah, I'm, so I'm basically being a little more careful, you know, with the breads and tamales because I love tamales. And yeah, drinking a lot of water. Yeah, I don't really diet. I love eating like in and out and Chick-fil-A. I love that stuff. Yeah. You just do everything in moderation, I imagine, right? Yes, that, that good old virtue, cardinal virtue of temperance. <laughs> I was telling you earlier, uh, before we started the conversation, I think I've gained about 20 pounds since we started this quarantine. Like literally, like no exaggeration, about 20 pounds. And it's, it's all the usual usual suspects, you know, tacos and yeah. and hot Cheetos. And, you know, uh, that's probably the main two, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I don't know, I, I, I need to discipline myself better. Maybe you can shoot me some pointers, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, here's the thing, like, how bad do you want that? It's it's kind of cup. It's not all. I like, like a lot. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Then <laughs> only the man within the man can, <laughs> can discipline the man. You know, that's your yeah. willpower. I think it's all about fighting that temptation, and that's how you strengthen yourself. But before I became as disciplined as I am now, which I still feel I have a ton of work to do. But yeah, yeah. before I got to where I am today, by the grace of God. I was eating, like in college, oh my gosh, fast food every day. Wow. Hot Cheetos, Doritos, Rocky Road ice cream. Oh, you name that's it. My favorite. I love it. I love Rocky oh, Road. Oh, Bluebell, especially. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I love Rocky. I just love chocolate, chocolate ice cream. You just know what's the trip? I'm a, I don't mean to get off the subject too much, right? But Rocky Road ice cream is actually nostalgic for me because it was my mother's favorite. Hmm. And, you know, before her passing, right? She always had. Rocky Road ice cream in the fridge. And so like nowadays, I like when I eat Rocky Road ice cream, it reminds me of my mom. Is that weird? No, it's not weird at all. I actually wonder, is it painful for you or is it a good thing? Is it like- no, it's, a good, is thing. It, it's a good thing, it's yeah. Okay, it's comforting. Some people might associate with pain or they might associate with comfort. Well, Rocky Road ice cream did make me cry once. Mm. It did, and I'll tell you, after my mom had passed, we were visiting my dad one time at the house and and I don't know why, I just got up to go to the freezer to go get some ice cream, just thinking there's gonna be Rocky Road. Cause there always was, right? And I, I went to the freezer and I opened the door and there's no Rocky Road in the freezer. Yeah. I just started crying like uncontrollably, you know? And my, my, my wife walks in, she's like, well, what's the matter, what's going on? I was like, there's no Rocky Road, right? And I was like, and she's like, what do you, what, what, what do you mean? And I was like, mom always had Rocky Road and there's no Rocky yeah. Road, you know? And I was like, it's, it's funny how food does that to us, right? Yeah, but if you think about it, it's so much deeper than the food. You were associating that rocky road with the memory of your mother. That's You're why. You have your parents in your life still, right? I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Yes, I do. I have both my parents, mommy and daddy. How supportive are they of what you do? Very supportive. However, there's always that but. It's, <laughs> that's why I don't tell them what I do because, like, like one of these commercials I did was a Samsung commercial and I had to paraglide off the Malibu cliffs. I think I told you about that. Yeah. 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 And I literally you have to just run off, run off the cliff. And if you don't run fast enough and jump hard enough, you might just go tumbling down. So you wow. have to get enough wind, enough speed, enough jump to, to jump off this cliff. And I had a co-pilot with me. And so that was really fun. I was thrilled. We got to do that several times, but I didn't tell my mom about that till two years after. <laughs> She's like, wow. I showed her a video like a few months ago. And yeah. she's like, what? When did you do that? Just let me see that again. I was like, mom, this was like a few years ago. Wow, wow. Now, you made mention a couple of times um, earlier in, the, in our conversation that you petite, that you're a, a small woman, right? How, how petite are we talking? Praise be to God. Well, I like to say I'm four nine, hazel eyes, smile like the sunrise. <laughs> Hey, that's what's up. That's I'm what's just up. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. Anyway, <laughs> no, I'm like four eight actually. But, oh, yeah. uh, okay. Would you would you say that you know being petite kind of worked to your advantage in a sense, right? Because it kind of puts you in a in a niche role, right? For what you do. Oh yeah, definitely. How so? Like, how does it work to your advantage? Well, if you think about it, there aren't many like adults that are like this petite, and I mean, there's there are a number of adults that are pretty. Uh, petite. Mm -hmm. However, 
their body sizes might be like a little too overweight or stocky or whatever to double kit. Mm. So for me, I have like the the framing, like the size is is good to double kids. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, so most of your roles were were you were you doubling for 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 children actors mm -hmm. or teenagers, or, right? Yeah, or petite actresses. Which is, there's been several as well. Nice. But nice. it's like a niche to have this kid thing. And I'm so thankful for that because I absolutely love kids so much. And they're yeah. so blessed to work with. Not that my petite actresses aren't either. I love them. But yeah. there's something about working with kids that just, it just takes you away from like reality. I don't know. It's so strange. They're so heavenly. I love kids. They're so beautiful. All right, everybody. We're taking a quick break to shout out to the sponsors. El Padrecito Productions, Separate Mind Productions, Reach Architect. Thank you for support. And thank you for making this program possible. Let's get back to the business. How'd you get into the line of work to begin with? It's a long story, but I'll try to get to it as fast as I can. It, there's different things that took place and it was mm -hmm. all God's hand. It was all providential. But yeah. shout out to Catherine Coven Pacino, Al Pacino's stepmom. She was part of the reason why I'm in the movie industry. Um, Al Pacino's stepmom? Step yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, she was part of it. Um, I met her at a red carpet event after I've worked on a music video, um, but she basically got me more connected into deeper part of Hollywood. A lot, you know, like there's a level of important people, VIP people, right, that you call them, um, that I got to meet and from there network right. more and whatnot. And, um, and, but then like for the stunt portion of it, um, basically the Lord just, I was at the right place at the right time. He opened the doors for me. Yeah. And I met basically through a, a stranger girl, a girl that I didn't know until I met, you know, she came up to me and talked to me that day, asked me what I wanted to do, told her I've always loved action acting, but I didn't know it was a, you know, a thing. Like, yeah. you know, like I always liked Jackie Chan and Angelina Jolie, some of my favorites. Yeah. She's like, that's cool, that's an actual thing, you know, it's in its own career. I was like, oh, okay, cool. She's like, no, for real, it's called stunts. I was like, what? Well, I'd like to do that because I had no idea. It was, it's so seamless when you're watching TV and movies. She's yeah. like, yeah, my dad's a stunt coordinator. I was like, what? I was like, oh my gosh, I'd love to meet him someday. She's like, he's standing right over there. I was like, no way. Like, it was so providential. And she yeah. just introduced me to him. That wonderful man to uh, basically had these wonderful young ladies look out for me and take me under their wing and I got some mentorship and I got some training and basically doors open and history made ever since basically by the grace of God. Nice. That's a pretty interesting story. Like, I, I mean, just being in, in the right place at the right time. Um, well, but I think also it goes a little bit further than that, right? Because you and I are both, you know, people of faith, right? It's also just kind of, just kind of being aware of what, what God's, you know, placing in your, in your path, right? Because you could have kind of like blown her off or kind of right but you didn't you were kind of open did you realize that maybe you know what this this is kind of god working in my life like putting this open I, wasn't even thinking about it. i wasn't even thinking about that no i was just in the present moment i saw yeah. the, I, this i saw this young blonde girl she came and sat down next to me i was sitting by myself enjoying present life you know yeah. just watching the world around me she just comes and sits next to me she's like hey i'm tara i was like Hi, I'm, I'm Brenda. Nice to meet you. We yeah. just started talking. And in our talk, I just started enjoying her presence and... So you were in school at the time? You're, or no? No, uh, basically... You were college at the time, or no? I was in college, yeah. College at the time, right. Right? yeah. Cool, where'd you go to college? I went to a variety of different colleges. So I went to Anson Valley College, and I got two associate's degrees, one in 2010, one in 2011. Mm -hmm. One in uh, social and behavioral sciences, one in liberal arts and humanities. That one was more the artsy creative side of me. Yeah. And the other one was more analytical and like the study one. I love both components. And then in 2013, I graduated from Cal State University, Northridge, where I got my bachelor's and um, sub bachelor, like a minor basically, in broadcast journalism and Spanish language journalism, where I ended up working in Telemundo and NBC and Mundos. Uh, two years later, I graduated with my master's degree in counseling psychology from Loyola Marymount University, which is a Catholic Jesuit uh, university near LAX in LA. And see, that all goes back to that work ethic that we talked about earlier, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's incredible that you can do all that and, and have such a expansive, right, uh, resume or portfolio, right? It's just, 
it's awesome to see that. We don't hear this, this type of, of success story from our young Latinos and Latinas as often as we should, right? I mean, there's plenty of stories out there, I imagine. Do you ever kind of think about that? You're being an example, you know, to, to other Latinos and Latinas out in the world or young ladies in particular or anything like that? You know, I, I think that was my driving force for a long time was when I realized I was drawing attention out of nowhere and I didn't know why. I was just yeah. enjoying life. I was just doing my my thing with enthusiasm, with a great joy and gratitude to the Lord for everything he has given me. Yeah. And literally that's because of a cooperation with his grace. Yeah. So it's my will and his will working together. And he just, I think he blessed that. Though for some reason, I think when I, I fell and I, I, I went through a hard time in life, I feel like that time in my life, I felt like I didn't even deserve to be looked at as a role model anymore. Mm. And so I stopped thinking that I was a role model. And I think that's a bad thing because I think those are lies for you to think anything that isn't positive, that's, you know, whatever's negative isn't from God, you know? Yeah. And so, but I appreciate that I went through that because um, it allows you to live in a different perspective for a while. Yeah. And it allows you to have the compassion and the mercy that that people who deal with negativity, depression, dejection, and those kind of pessimistic downward spiral thoughts, it helps you feel for them. It helps you understand them. So it's it's been such a grace. I know that everything unfolding in my life is God's hand at work anyway. So yeah. at the end of the day, I just trusted him, period. Has there ever been a point in time where you kind of felt discouraged? You didn't, like, you didn't know where you were going to find the courage to go forward? or Absolutely, with a capital A, to the point of there's no hope for me. There's no nothing in me. There's nothing left. Yeah. The way I described it was like a very dark time in my life where I had no, no will or desire to even breathe or live. It was really bad. Yeah. And... Uh, one of the ways I describe it is like, I felt like the cross was way too heavy for me, which is, you yeah. know. Yeah. I felt, I, the way I said it was like, I felt like not only did I need Jesus to help me, but I needed Simon too, to help us carry my cross. Cause I felt like I was buried six feet under already. I felt so dead in life. Yeah. And I really, really thank God and praise him. And I can't thank him or glorify him enough for miraculously taking me out of that. Because I thought yeah. I would be stuck in that forever. And that was really hard. That was the hardest time of my life, for sure. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, I know we, you've mentioned your faith a few times now. How, how important of a role is, is faith in your life right now? And how important of a role was it at the beginning? Was it something that you've kind of developed over time? Or did you have this, this kind of devotion from the beginning? Thank you for that question. Crazy enough, I always felt very strange to not want to share this, actually. But I don't mind sharing this. But I've always felt like, well, I've always had a relationship with God since I was three years old. Wow. But I thought it was so far-fetched because when I shared that to my spiritual uh, director, that I had um, like conversations and or locutions with Christ, you know, um, I I thought everybody did. Yeah. And he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. So that's when I realized, hold on. This doesn't happen to everybody. So I realized that was a gift. And I thought it would be, you know, I don't know when it would be appropriate to share this and who would want to know anyway. So I thought only when someone would ask, I'll tell. Um, but yes, I felt like I've always, I know I've always had God with me since at least three years old. I've yeah. always felt he had, he was grabbing me by the, holding me by the hand and we were walking together. So everything I, every path I went was always illuminated by his grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's just a beautiful, loving bond and relationship I've had since 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 baby, basically. Um, however, when I feel like I kind of went, a, kind of drifted away in my own sense due to my own fallenness and my own errors and mistakes, mm -hmm. God forgive me. That's when I noticed that I don't feel His presence so much anymore. I felt like there was an absence in my life. However, He never leaves us, right? He never leaves or abandons us. He never forsakes never. us. But in my thoughts, I thought he did. And that's why I felt so so dis discouraged, so so much in, I was in despair, really. I was so down. Yeah. And, oh man, I can't even believe yeah. I got that bad. But anyway, it was a definitely, 
a reminder that he's not always going to permit good feelings. St. Catherine of Siena, in her dialogue, teaches that sometimes he takes away those feelings, those consolations, so that we can depend on trusting him and and trusting that he really is always there for us, despite the fact that those good feelings aren't always there. And that has set me up so well for me today. You say you had the faith since you were at least three years old, right? Was this something that was instilled um, by your parents or, mm. or how did that work out? Honestly, yes and no, because like my parents weren't necessarily showing me so much faith yet. Yeah. I, I think there was a lot of trials going on in life that it wasn't like the number one thing. However, I think I, I noticed all the good in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, but really what I remember the first thing that comes to my mind is my grandma, my mother's mom, who passed yeah. away when I was six, actually. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Um, I would sometimes sleep with her in her bed and she would pray the rosary. And so I would remember what that was. Like that was, I thought that was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen of this yeah. precious little lady praying the rosary. I, I didn't know what that was. I just thought it was beautiful and I wanted everything to do with that. Yeah. And, um, but I don't recall anyone teaching me like, this is what you need to do. You need to, you know, I just had a desire in me because I always felt very orphaned in my life. I always felt really empty and abandoned, even though that wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. I always felt like I never fit in to my own family. And, you know, my family knows this, so it's nothing like far fetched for them to hear. They know this today that even today, I don't really feel like I fit in, but not in a bad way. I just feel different and it's not mm -hmm. a bad thing. I think a lot of people can relate. Yeah. And so, um, for that reason, I just, I think my young, small soul just kind of um, transcended everything. And when you're young and little and innocent like that, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that goes on that only God can tell you because I can't put it into words. I can't explain it. But a lot of things in heavenly realms that you you see or experience that can't just can't be translated into basic English. And I felt and saw a lot of those things. And I think I had this reassurance that I know for sure God is real. And I know for sure we are together always. And so that's how I carried the faith. And I would walk to church by myself as a, as a seven-year-old because church was down the street from my house. And I would just go to Misa by myself to go to mass. You wow. know, if my parents were working, I would just take myself. I was seven years old. That's and I would, pretty cool. Yeah, no one else came with me. I would just go. And I looked forward to praying every night before my bed. And I just wanted to make my God happy. And my catechism teacher, I said, look, I just remembered new prayers. And I couldn't <laughs> wait to show her the prayers I remembered. And then, you know, she'd give me a little sticker. So that yeah. was, you know, I just wanted to be God's favorite student, God's favorite child, always. Is there ever a, a, um, a conflict, I guess you'd say, right? Between your faith and your work? I mean, oh, oh. I know there's a, a variety of Christians, right? That look at Hollywood and they, they think Hollywood is kind of like a very uh, deprived place morally, right? You and I both know that there's a lot of actors and actresses and, you know, people that are involved in Hollywood that are people of faith, right? So it's not all bad. I mean, sure, there's some bad things that go on, right? Yeah. Um, is there ever been a conflict between your work and your faith and what you do? Absolutely. Unfortunately... How do you deal with that? Oh, it's hard. Every day, it's, it's a challenge because, you know, it's not like... I don't know if it's an everyday thing, but I think I think about it. I guess the concern is... Um, there's different concerns and different levels of concern too. It's not always extreme, right? But like there are times like, you're, I'll give you an example. Years ago, I had an agent that was sending me off to these great auditions for these huge shows and movies. Yeah. But a lot of the roles that they wanted to cast me with was always like very sexy, grown next door, topless, sorry to get so like, you know, but that's just like straight yeah. how they wanted things to be done. And I was like, you know, I would tell my agent, you know, I don't know why I'm so tempted to take this job, to be honest with you. I am tempted to take it because the money is good, but no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And I even had to tell my parents, I was like, should I do it? I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I thinking? No, I shouldn't do that. So there was a battle. However, this was the years ago. Now I know like, you know. The boundaries, right? Now. Of course, of course. Now I know 
you know, my faith has grown so much more and I, I don't question that anymore. Yeah. So those are the things that you have to discern and think about as opposed to before when I wasn't so uh, invested in my faith the way I am intellectually now or spiritually, just at the level, I guess, that I am now. Um, it was something more that I, I was, it was much more of a temptation because the money, the fame and whatnot, as opposed to now I just really trust that God is providing, period, you know, and sure enough, I mean, he's proven it over and over that things have only gotten better. And then he surprises me with these rewards and nominations out of nowhere. The more faithful I've become to him, it's really incredible. And I just, you know, I just pray that. You know, the Lord just continues to show me His way and His will because that's really what matters at the end of the day. But it doesn't mean it's easier. It's still a struggle. It's still it's still something I have to pray about and discern every day. Now, I've had the privilege of being with you at a couple of different uh, events in Los Angeles and in New Mexico, right? Yeah. And then, um, I was impressed. And, and I wasn't the only one. It was pretty unanimous. Everybody I talked to <laughs> was very impressed by um because this is another role that you have right that you do you do some public speaking and, and a lot of your public speaking revolves around faith and around just our christian values our, our catholic values and stuff like that and just how well versed you are and how knowledgeable you are about about our faith right and about um the church fathers and about the saints and about you know these different you know the way you prepared your speech you know um it's just, it blew me away, oh. right? And how much time do you have, or I mean, how do you even have the time to dedicate to that type of a spiritual life and still the type of work you do? Like, what, how do you find the balance? What do you do? You know, that's, thank you. That's something that I'm like, wow, God, I couldn't do that without you. There's no way I could have done that. Because I was working on that movie when I got into that wreck remember when i was preparing for that talk uh, i do i do remember yes and that scared the daylights out of me when you <laughs> i'm sorry told me about that accident i was like whoa it wasn't I thought about that here in a minute end of me but yeah. look i had my i had my meditations and um like an you know notes essay type stuff i was preparing for my talk so i can you know at work during my lunch or when we have breaks or whatever i can prepare and whatnot and it yeah. wasn't even it didn't even work out that way because I got into that car accident that day where my car was totaled mm, yeah. on the way to work. Basically, I still ended up making it to work by the grace of God 40 minutes early. No, nothing happened to me physically. God is so good. So glad you were okay. Thank sure. You. But, but yeah. besides that particular component, I think um, I just pray that God help me because I really can't do it on my own. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I really need his help. Without him, I I don't I just don't think I can function really. Yeah. <laughs> That's the honest truth. Yeah, so yeah. when his grace is with me um, and my trust is there, my hope is in him. I think the, there's no limits, you know. Yeah, your routine you know blows me away too because you attend daily mass. At least you know when the quarantine was going on, you're I in see. daily mass, and not Even that you're doing daily know. mass through streaming, right? Yes. And of course, I imagine you have a, a pretty, you know, solid prayer life and devotional. What type of devotionals do you have? So in the mornings, I like to watch uh, Daily Mass with Bishop Robert Barron. Oh, yeah. Him, it's, he, ro he rotates with this Father Steve Gunrow. I think they have such rich homilies that yeah. I have a preference for that, you know. Um, he's very intellectual as well, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. I learned a lot from him. So I do my Daily Mass. And uh -huh. then I do my morning offering. Mm -hmm. um, I offer myself to the Lord. I do divine mercy reflections and gospel reflections in the morning. Yeah. I meditate on the Beatitudes in the morning and the, on the Ten Commandments. So I can try to live them the best I can. Um, because I think the philosophy of my life is something I'm about to give away. Which is something that I think is worth teaching and to for people to really try to live as well. And it's called the Magnificent Seven. Uh -huh. And that is the way I try to live my life, which is um, to live the commandments, to live the beatitudes, to live the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, to live the theological and cardinal virtues, and to live the fruits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's the Magnificent Seven. And now that's like the ideal perfect human being, which I'm not and neither is anyone else who's a 
a human being. Um, however, it's something that is worth striving for, and I think it's achievable. I think a, a certain level of excellence and holiness is absolutely achievable. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So that's what mm, part of my routine looks like in the morning. I also do um, the liturgy of the hours, just twice a day, nice. morning and night. There's times I do fail though, like sometimes in the morning, like I ran out of time. So I try to make up at night or if not, there's a day that unfortunately I miss How often it. How do you pray the rosary? Every single day at 9 p.m. Wow. Yeah, by the grace of God, because it took a long time to get back into that habit. Uh, I used to pray it twice a day before all that stuff happened. Yeah, but now it's once a day, yeah. It, and the Divine Mercy Chaplet following that. Wow, wow, that is really awesome. Thank that's you. really, really, really cool. And, and I think that's what impresses me the most about you, right? You have this this resume that's crazy, you know, in, in Hollywood. But the thing that impresses me the most about you is your spiritual journey and your spiritual strength. That's impressive to me uh, because that's Hungry been a typical Jesus. part of my life. I'm sorry. I'm so hungry for Jesus. I'm yeah. so hungry and thirsty. I can't get enough of him. I'm obsessed. I think I'm living in purgatory right now. How much I desire him. And yeah. uh, like, I can't wait to see him in heaven. But it's right. not it's not like a depressing statement. I just literally cannot wait to see him and embrace him. You know, the cool thing, you know, about being Catholic, right? Is we, we get to see him in the Eucharist, right? <laughs> and he's, I know. He's there body blessed, soul and divinity, but right? But I still can't wait for that every day. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I wanted to get into to a little bit of Q&A from some of the listeners, right? I got some, some questions oh, yeah. for you. You cool with that? Absolutely. Okay, okay, cool. We have a mutual friend. His name is Salud. Salud! Yeah, Alberto. <laughs> Yeah. Masonet. I hope I said his name right. Masonet. Okay. Yeah, AKA Salud from Tampa, Florida. He's hey. got a two part question for you. The first one, he says, Have you copped the new Salud LP yet? Hey. <laughs> if I you have haven't, it's fire, by the way. He's got a new EP. Yeah. Nice. It's a nice you EP. I need to fire. check up on social media. So I'm so yeah. sorry. Let I'll me know right now. Yes, please. please I'll send you a link. So his I, second I, part of his question, and I think he was kind of joking around on the no, phone. No, but you know I support. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> but he says here, he says, since Hollywood is sometimes known as an amoral sewer pipe, what is your mission as a Christian in the midst of this world? Beautiful question. Thank hey. you so much. Wow, that's great. I have realized that I am just countercultural. I'm different. It used to bother me so badly because I just kind of wanted to just fit in with the rest of everybody else. I realized I wasn't born to fit in. I was born to stand out. Yeah. That's the way God made me. And with that comes a lot of rejection, a lot of dis, um, disrespect. No, not, not so much actually disrespect, thankfully, but sometimes it just depends on who you're dealing with or whatever. But rejection because you're different, because you are a light for the world. You are the salt of the earth. And people see that, I think. And I only... I'm able to say this because I've been told this, not because I'm thinking this about myself. Yeah. But I, I, I notice it with other lights in the world too. That's the reason why I can talk on their behalf. So I think now my mission is to just be a light for God and not be afraid to be that. Because I'll be honest, a big struggle for me was I'm just so afraid to succeed. I'm afraid God is gonna really do the great things he promised. Who am I to, take hold of that like who am i nothing but a, a a sinner you know like there's no way i even deserve any of that so like i just have to trust him i, I trust that i don't deserve still don't deserve any good thing but i thank him for every part of it i live my life in joy and gratitude because of that because i know any any every, everything is a gift everything can be taken at an instant um, so, so long as he wants to bless my life and so long as I'm willing to cooperate with him by the grace of God, I just have to trust with my arms and my love wide open for him that I'll be doing his will for the world, um, for his glory. Nice, nice. For his glory, yeah. Next question is coming from Brenda Padilla in LA. Hey. In Los Angeles. And she's asking, what advice would you give to other women thinking about becoming Catholic and or considering going into a career such as yours? Thank you so much for that question, Brenda Padilla. Well, first of all, 
find yourself and ground yourself. Be founded and grounded in your Catholic faith first. Because if not, it's pretty easy to get lost in the midst of all the temptations of Hollywood. Hollywood offers a lot of things that people really hope for, you know, like flying first class to your work and being able to stay in nice hotels and suites and working on these big movie productions and music videos and TV shows and there's just a lot of alluring temptations, right? I mean, there's so many to name that are just what people want to ride in in a limo with other celebrities or on the same plane. You know, all these things that people kind of really fantasize about. But like, if you're not sure who you are in your faith, you can you can kind of fall off the rail a little bit. You have to be careful. Um, so I think putting that faith first is super important. That way you'll always know who you are and you'll never compromise. So yeah. that's important. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great answer. No, thank you. Um, the next thank question you. we have is coming from Scott Silva. Hey. Texas. And he's asking here, do you have a spiritual mentor or accountability partner? How has it helped you along the way? And what should I look for in a spiritual mentor or accountability partner? Thank you for that wonderful question, Scott. I do, I do, I have one in particular, but I do have several, like, uh, you know, I have my spiritual director, a spiritual guide, and then that spiritual mentor. So those are like uh, three people I can go to, but especially the female, which is the spiritual mentor, that I feel like I can just, I don't know if it's because she's female, I think it might be why, but I feel like I can really tell, uh, you know, talk to her about more of the female part of whatever issues or concerns I might have. And so for that reason, I feel like a spiritual mentor is a good accountability peer. So there's someone that isn't really going to be like so coachy to you, but also going to be a peer for you. I think that's what you look for. But at the same time, they are going to have that coachy aspect where they're going to hold you accountable. And they're gonna be like, you know, especially as a man, like try to not whip you into place, but because you're both men, if that's the case for you, um, they're going to want the best out of you. Iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah, yeah, and a sure. lot of that is like, wow, like, you know, sometimes you might not agree because it, it might burn or it might sting, but if it, it's right, it's true, and it's leading you to some goodness. So I hope that helps. Yeah, just a little side note on that. I, I try to make it to confession pretty frequently. Right. Um, I was trying to go every couple of weeks or at least every month. Right. To confession. And at a point in time, I was going to uh, to the same priest every every time. And he's, he's an older priest, but he's very, very knowledgeable and very, very. He knew me well. And anyways, uh, one time he, he like really just kind of gave it to me in confession in a good way. Like oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I, I made the confession. I expect him to kind of be like, absolve you of your sin. Right. Yeah, he was yeah. like, Carlos. You of all people know better. You know, and I was like, whoa. Because <laughs> I've never like, I've never had the experience where a priest kind of like, Pio, man. breaks it down to me like that. They're usually just kind of like, okay, cool. You know, you but he's like, I, I feel like I can tell you this because I feel like you're ready to receive it, you know, spiritually, like you're you're mature enough to, to hear this. And he told me, You of all people should know better and you need to straighten your act. Get it together get it together you know and he just like kind of like in, in a sense scolded me i guess you could say right but not not in a bad way i could say that we, this is not the norm i don't think so people i don't want to scare anybody from going to confession right no, uh, this is not the norm it's just because he was my normal yeah you priest that i would go to every time and we knew each other well like that and he felt like i was spiritually mature enough to hear it and to and to take it the constructive you know criticism or whatever yeah, it was, right? thank you for sharing so, that's that's cool i liked it she said, said that we got one last question, right? And it's coming from uh, Angel Sandoval. And he's in Fontana, California. Hey, right? yeah. And he's asking, just what are your ultimate goals working in the in the industry in Hollywood? My goal is to bring a harmony of brotherhood to people, which means fulfilling that commandment to love God and love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. And that's kind of like my ninja way of sneaking love in a not like worldly way of seeing love like peace hippie like no no offense to that either but like truly love like a self-sacrificing de denial of self type of love where you respect your brother where you consider your brother you know and put others before you 
if I can help establish that kind of community or that kind of culture, even at the expense of my life, I think it's worth it. Nice. So, yeah. That's a good answer. That's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. You. Hey, I wanted to mention real quick, um, you're Salvadoreña, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you're born in, in L.A., right? Yes, born in East born LA. LA. I was born in East LA. <laughs> so when I head back to LA, right, you got to tell me the spots where I can fi find the bomb Salvadorian families, oh. right? Oh, okay. I need to know the spots, you know, some pupusas, some Salvadorian tamales. Anything. The lady down the street from my house. Hey, please. Oh, man, come on. Hey, Just I'm telling you, that's my thing. I'm a foodie. Panes yeah. oh my goodness, pupusas. Hey, what's your favorite? The, the revueltas or what? Oh, yes. The revuelta pupusas? Yes. Stop. <laughs> oh, my mom. That's what's up. <laughs> I haven't good. forgot my, my promise that when you, when you make it back to Texas, I'm going to take you for some good Texas hey, barbecue. Hey, thank you. Hey, you got to get some ribs and some brisket and some... Come on. Jalapeno cheddar sausage. I'm making myself hungry right now. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to thank you for your time. I know you're a busy person, so thank you for taking the time to be here with me. And, and I look forward to working with you again in the future with more events, you know, more speaking engagements, whatever, right? Where can people follow you on social media? Thank you. Um, my Instagram handle is at Brenda L for my middle initial, Lorena Garcia. Brenda L Garcia on Instagram and Facebook. If you just type in Brenda Lorena Garcia, you could even Google that and you'll see my Twitter and you'll see my public Facebook page. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's about it, I think. And my IMDb will show up and stuff. Nice. And is there any, anything else that you'd like to share before we... You know, I just think... I, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in, for listening. And thank you, C26, for having me. I'm so honored and privileged and blessed. Thank well, the honor's you. all mine. Huh? Thank you very much. And, you know, I just want to encourage you guys today to really believe in yourselves. To really not be afraid to think big and go for something greater for God. You know, just trust that He is taking care of you, period. And just dare to not be afraid. Dare to be holy. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing, Brenda. And uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. God bless you guys. God, God love bless you. God you. Tell care. everybody out there that I said hi. Thank you. Likewise. Take care. We'll talk later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. And as always, I want to thank the sponsors, El Padrecito Ministries, Reach Architects, uh, my boy Separate Mind, and my boy Val Morale. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a blessed and a safe week. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time on The Cradle Catholic.